In this video, we're going to talk about implicit functions explicitly. So suppose we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Well, we want, or we might want, to find some function such that when I have x squared plus f of x squared, I have that this constraint is satisfied, right? But now I want f as a function of x. Well, we call this f of x an implicit function because f is implied by the constraint. Which is, which is really great. In this circumstance, we can actually solve for f of x, right? And it's not always the case that we can do that, but in this case, we, we solve for f of x by first taking x over to one side, so we have 1 minus x squared, right? And then f of x is either equal to the, the positive or the negative square root of 1 minus x squared. And so let's just assume that f of x is say equal to square root of 1 minus x squared. And if we look at the picture, we have x varying and we have that f of x carves out a semicircle. This is just our solution to the semicircle. But notice that over here, in this region, in this region right here, past x is equal to 1, I don't have a well-defined function. So around this point, so at x is 1, we don't have f of x defined around x is equal to 1. And that means there is no implicit function around x is equal to 1. That is, we can't find an f of x that's defined in an entire region here, right? What we could do is we could realize that my constraint is just this entire circle, and we could switch our endogenous variable at that point. So here, our endogenous variable was x. No, no, no. Our endogenous variable was uh, y, right? Which was a function of x and our exogenous variable was x. Well, if we switch our exogenous variable to be y now, I can get a function of y that spits out the correct x value to be a function over here. And so I would have a g of x or a g of y squared plus y squared is equal to 1 at and, and around the point x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. And that's kind of that's kind of the whole point. We want to know in the long run, we want to know exactly when this kind of situation occurs. So let's get another example of uh, implicit function. Well, here we can have the constraint x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And of course, that's just the sphere. Well, this implies one possible function 
where I have my exogenous variables x and y. This is equal to square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And so our z equal f of x, y satisfies x squared plus y squared plus f of x, y squared is equal to 1. But again, there's a situation where this equation breaks down. Right, so we've got this, uh, this parameterized the, the top cap of a sphere. So we've got a sphere here. We've got our sphere. We've got the top cap of the sphere, but if I wanted to, and if I parameterize in any disk around some x, y, then I get a corresponding sheet up here where my function is well defined. But if I wanted to have a function around here that gives me a unique z value, well, I'd fail because there's no function value up here. How do I define this over here? So I don't have an implicit function right? I don't have around any x not y not with x not squared plus y not squared equals to 1 if z is the endogenous variable. It just doesn't happen because I can't get the values for all the points around this point. However, I could switch planes I could switch my endogenous variable and say that, well, instead I want my endogenous variable to be, say, x, whatever. And that would be okay. Well, in these situations, we can actually solve for an equation, and we know that our domain is definitely going to be uh, restricted because we're taking a square root. But it's not the case that we can solve these kind of equations all the time. We actually have very few equations that we can solve like that. So here's an example of something that's a little more hideous. So let's suppose you have x to the fourth plus 2x squared y squared plus 2xy plus y is equal to 100. That looks awful. You don't know how to solve it. Technically, you can solve this. It is the case that you can actually solve this. The number of expressions, you can solve this for, say, x. So y, this is not too bad to solve for, right? We could solve for y um, because this is essentially just a quadratic in y, if you think about it. Um, solving for x is another matter entirely because we have a f to the fourth power here. Uh, and solving something that has a fourth power in it is very daunting. It can be done, but you end up with a 16 expression term and we just won't do it. It's not done. Well, you can actually get a graph of this, so you can plug this into uh, EasyPlot in MATLAB, if you so desire. And what does this thing look like? What does this expression look like? Or what is what does the set of x and y satisfying this look like? Well, it looks like kind of a weird star-ish shape that, that really kind of juts down here. I'm, I'm really not doing it exactly justice. It's got a really long tail down here. But that's, that's roughly what it looks like. And we know, and we should be able to get an implicit function if we're somewhere within this region, right? Over here, the implicit function, uh, I mean, of course, an implicit function with exogenous variable x, right? 
over here and over here it'll break down because I don't have a value, a good value for y associated to that, right? But inside of here, if I fix a point that I want to have a function around, I can do that. Here, if I want to fix a point and have a function in an interval around that x, I can do that. And that's, that's the guy right there. And in general, this is all that we really need to know is that that function does exist. If that function does exist, then we can go ahead and move in and use numerical numerical techniques to actually compute values of the function that are nearby. And that's that's how we live. That's just life. But the important thing is how do we know how do we know when we can actually get an implicit function? And that is going to be summed up by the implicit function theorem and we're going to start off with a a relatively simple form for the implicit function theorem where we have exactly one endogenous variable.